let's see. Let's, uh, one second. So, um, I've been working on this for the past week and two days. Uh, just hit me that I would like to play something along the lines of Master of Orion 1, just in a different setting. Um, something that not a lot of your four times games are, and that's just the ease of being able to play without getting, you know, too into planetary management, economy management, um, so you want to touch, touch on that stuff, some people just don't like to go as deep, so I'm thinking more along the lines of like Sword of the Stars, or Sword of the Stars, I think that was called, um, the, the 4X genre has just been done over and over, um, and of course you have all your Total War series and um, I forget what else is out there. Anyways, so I just wanted to do something new, something a little bit lighter, um, maybe even simple, but to capture the essence of those types of games that I like to play back in the you know late 80s, mid 90s. Um, so this is Masters of the Stone Age. Yes, it is like Moo. <laughs> um, so what I got going on here, uh, there are there are some things that I'm still learning as I have been self-taught this whole programming GML stuff over the past year. Uh, now actually about a year, and I bought it. I bought Game Maker Studio back in January of 2018. So almost two years. I've learned a lot, but I still don't consider myself a master, so there's things I'm still learning along the way. But things are progressing faster in this development than they have my previous two developments that are still ongoing. They're just caught up more so in the art phase with animations and that type of stuff. And because I don't have a super duper sweet, you know, $3,000 <laughs> graphic art pad, uh, mine forces me to draw with my hands over here and then look over here to the monitor to see where I'm actually touching pen to, you know, drawing surface. So the artwork takes a little while. What I got going on in here, you're going to see a lot of placeholder type stuff. Um, not, not the greatest looking stuff. I will go over the artwork again and then again and again and probably till you know, I feel it meets my own standards. Before I put it out there to uh, release, but the art that is going to be required really isn't as intensive as my other two uh, projects, just because the animations. I mean, so this this should go relatively quick. I expect to hopefully have something betaable. <laughs> Making new terms, betaable somewhere. To late August, I'm hoping. Hell, even maybe even sooner. I mean, as quick as this thing has come along. Again, this is only nine days into well, I mean, from literally saying, you know what, I want to make this type of game, and this is what I want to have in it, to writing down little notes, to actually making things and coding them to work together. So, anyways, go ahead and hit play. main menu, uh, continue, just basically we pop right into the game. And I'm going to go over stuff that you may have already seen videos that I posted on, just as I've kind of developed to drum up a little bit of interest. I do have somebody that I've spoken with uh, that actually does sound music, and he is um, working on some stuff for me, basically told him what I'm looking for. Uh, he told me what I can expect, listened to some sample stuff, sounded really good. Um, hopefully, you know, when he comes up with whatever he does, it'll be something that uh, really flows with the game. So for now, I'm going to just hit a couple things, load game, that's not functioning at this time. i got to create the save system, 
in order to load old games. Uh, same with continue. Right now, continue just jumps straight into the map. Uh, but because I want to show what I have done and expand on in the previous videos, I didn't really talk. I just I didn't talk at all. Actually, it was just focused on the game, and I just clicked on multiple things, just kind of show things. So, as you can see, you can select different, you know, the size of the the map that you're going to be playing on, the difficulty, and how many tribes. I have it right now to eight different tribes, eight different races that I've been developing, and some of those you'll see are recycled from the other developments that I've been working on. But just more in this whole Stone Age thing. Now, the artwork you're going to see in here, some of it isn't really Stone Age. It's just a graphical representation. So I can see where my coding is affecting what and how. So we go to the next screen. Um, first, you'll, you'll click on a tribe name, or you know, the type of tribe. And as you hover your mouse over each of these, it'll give you a description of, you know, that, that tribe's you know, information, the type of habitat that, you know, they flourish under, their strengths and weaknesses, and there, there may be more to this, I may expand it a little bit more, I don't know, uh, just because staying in that simplistic frame of mind, developing this, I don't want to get too in, intense, uh, uh, too in depth as far as information, but I want to give you just enough that you can kind of feel that this tribe is different from that tribe because these things are going to affect their stats as far as battles you know being determined the type of game you're going to have to play when you're using a, a specific type of race for instance the bulwark are these you know large uh, you know slow really strong people you know short temper typical neanderthal type <laughs> type guys uh they live in caves and they like the mountains and you know they don't they don't grow very quick as far as population they're very strong they're very large um, you know and they're not the smartest um, tribe on the map uh, but in the right hands and right skill and strategy you know they can conquer just like everybody else and that am you know they're, they're this uh, these people that you know they believe that this world belongs to them and they're just you know faster they're more agile than everybody else but they're very naive so they really take you at your face value and I won't go into each of these but just each of them play a little bit differently right now I just have the information popping up as you hover over your mouse later once I click it and I include because this ties into the save file so as you click these things it saves that information to a file and then that is that information is stored and read as you progress to, to the other screens and so forth. This is a very um, save slash mathematic type of game. I mean, all these strategy, you know, four time strategy games are. Uh, but that save file is very important. So because it's not created, it, it's not saving any information. I can click on all these all day. So it's not saving, but it is working as far as your mouse overs uh, popping up. And then same thing with the leader name. You can type anything in here. Again, it's not saving to the save file because there is no save file. Uh, and then you can jump over and switch your banner color. And then you can select an insignia. And maybe these different insignias may give you a little bit of bonus uh, as far as combat or, you know, whatever area that they may affect um, so anyways you'll leave the screen next you'll go to your camp and it'll be somewhere random on this map somewhere will be your first uh, camp slash colony and when you're here this is where you'll start to expand and just like you know Master of Ryan or you know one of those other four time games Master of Magic is another old one um, you know, you'll start out with a, maybe a hunter, uh, and a scout, and someone that can colonize. So, you know, you start out with the basic unit, three units, to get you started. And as you start to grow uh, and, and develop your technology and your army, you'll start meeting other clans, and uh, you'll go into the diplomacy phase. 
and then you know possibly war but right now I've been working the tech screen and again this GUI is very modern uh, for a Stone Age type of game but again it's just a representation until I can go back and actually do the artwork I want to do don't mind my pud man here <laughs> So in here, uh, you'll have your expansion versus other empires. You know, how fastly you're, you're growing compared to everybody else. Your economy, same thing. Military, same thing. And then here you can, uh, under these tabs, these are the technologies or areas that you've researched. So as you've re as you have your scholars focus on that type of research it'll show up under this list so that way you can keep track of what you've researched and up here you'll have like three different options that you can select to research next and down here it will tell you about that research and then next on your I know the screen looks kind of similar um, or the background image Next, your army up here, you know, you'll you'll control, and there will be slider controls as far as you know your population, you know your subscripts, uh, your subjects, or uh, there's another word that some people are very sensitive about, so I won't use it. And then your mercs, you can hire mercenaries, and then in this uh, tab here, you'll you'll again these are all sliders. So in this tab here, you'll select your armor, uh, whether they're more hand-to-hand -hand combat based or if they're projectile based, you know, your arrows, spears, uh, I don't really think they had trebuchets back then, but I'm sure they had other war machines, and if they're on foot or if they're mounted, and then down here under the morale, you'll have how much of your uh, resources will be towards your militaries the, the, you'll have the resources in your screen over here that will dictate where your resources are being spent and of your resources spent towards your military uh, the morale um, will be where those things are dictated as far as like the food how much you are how much of your food resource and clothing and uh, shelter and spirits, you know, women, alcohol, or men, whatever they're into, <laughs> um, is down here and it'll be percentage based. And then you'll have commandments as far as actually in battle, in combat, out of combat, you know, what is their stance as far as is this a war of attrition, uh, you know, are your, your generals or, you know, your commanders supposed to be, you know, doing attrition type things, you know, how much, you know, damage you can inflict on others, um, you know, and get out, you know, are you, is it, you know, scorched earth, you know, kill everything, uh, or is it gentle and, you know, the soft approach with your military, I don't know how that's going to work, but I'm sure there are ways. And then over here, you'll have your unit status, so all your units that are on the map will be listed here. And it'll show, you know, their lo the grid location where they're at, and whether they're camped or not. So there'll be like a check box or, uh, you know, an X. So you'll have whether they're camped or, you know, if they're they're ready for action. So you can have some that are just, you know, camped and not ready for action, or they're camped and they're ready. Um, this will play into you know the turn points you know how many movement points they have so if they're always on ready then they're going to eat through your food and your clothing and your shelter and your spirit your, your resources quicker so you you are going to have to manage you know some of that aspect whether they're they're ready or not and then of course there's going to be a disband button so you can you know disband units as needed so once you get out of there uh, now these ones are not done so you, you know you get to your council screen and in your council screen this is also your diplomacy so uh, you you'll meet with other you know once you've discovered other tribes and you set up trade routes or whatever it is uh, non-aggression packs or war whatever this is that screen that will hold that and then of course your map overview and as you discover there will be 
a fog of war. So as you discover areas, um, all line of sight. So as you discover areas, you know, it will reveal, you know, the other tribes. And then of course, the intern. Now when we get out of here, uh, this side here is going to be your, basically your advisor bar. So as you click on villages or whatever, you know, it will pop up here and it will give you the statuses of them, uh, of that town. And then um, here you can, I haven't quite figured that one out yet. I, I did, but I don't have it written down in front of me, so you have to pardon me. And then here you'll have your general overall sliders, kind of like Master of Orion. Um, your sliders as far as how much is being spent towards technology, how much is being spent towards, you know, expansion, uh, military, so forth. And yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. So developing the game shouldn't take... I mean, it will be very intense as far as math and creating AI and uh, all that type of stuff. But let me go back to the uh, army screen. So when I have here, what is your decree? So th this is your, um, you know, say there are certain actions you want to do or happen, you know, just one click button with your units that are in battle or, you know, whatever it is. So you can put out specific orders, you know, when your unit's going to combat, only use projectiles or, you know, something, something crazy. There'll be, there'll be different checkboxes in here. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you can kind of see the, the vision I had going into this and uh, hopefully you'll be anxious to play the game by the time I'm done. All right. Have a nice day. Bye.